call the meeting to order at six o'clock. Is that can everyone hear me out there? All right. Yes. Judy, can you hear me? Yes. Great. First on the agenda, are there any changes or additions, Dan? There are not. Okay. Next, approve the minutes. The minutes of January 4th, 2021. So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Community concerns. Yes, please. Right. I would like to, I can go after Jamie. Oh, how you doing? How you doing, James? I'm good, Bob. Thanks. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, first, first, I want to commend you for your Mountaineer attire. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, the reason for my uh, my joining this evening is uh, two weeks ago, I sent in an email to uh, the town administrator regarding the Act 250 uh, Duhamel pit permit. Uh, and I'm looking to find out where that stands. Uh, my email. It yeah, said he said it would be sent on to the board. I can uh, have Dan answer, but I think we're all kind of waiting at this point. I did send it on out to the board. Okay. Um, you, and right now we're just waiting for uh, it's going to be a more in depth, but we're waiting for our engineer to put together responses. Did you hear that, Jamie? I did. Um, so I, I guess. I guess what I'm hearing is uh, that uh, the town is not uh, interested in uh, hearing from or working with uh, members of the recreational community as far as uh, creating responses uh, to the 250 uh, board. I can speak to that a little bit, Jamie. That's Eric. How are you doing? Yeah, go ahead. Good. Jamie, what we got back from the Act 250 Commission was 11 pages. Uh, yeah, I've 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 read it. Got a copy of it. Yeah, uh, I've 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 read it, and that's what prompted my email to Dan. Right. So it is uh, so in depth. We immediately asked for an extension. We're granted yep. that extension until March. Yes. Um, giving us uh, or giving the engineer about well two months probably to get a response together, so we'd have time to review it and make any last minute changes or whatnot. I, I can tell you that my focus. Uh, although there were there were items in there about the recreation trails and the recreational usage of the property, my my focus is on the gravel uh, and making sure that we have covered all of the protection zones that they're asking about. Uh, I I am uh, I'm very very much uh, focused on that with the recreation trails not being dismissed, but I, I am so uh, concerned about our ability to uh, get materials out of that, that phase three right now that I haven't I, I haven't even thought about getting together to talk with anybody about recreational trails. Okay, I, I, I certainly appreciate that, Eric. Um, and I have never uh, tried to counter the fact of why that parcel was purchased nor the gravel extraction. I may not like it, uh, but that doesn't mean that I'm, yeah, I, just, I don't like it, but that is what it is. My feeling is um, that there were a number of questions proposed by the 250 Commission, um, and they seem to be very much interested in getting answers to recreational related questions. Um, and I think, in my opinion, it would behoove the town to answer those questions as fully as possible with input from the community. Uh, only because I think that it would look better to the 250 Commission if you've worked and spoken with the community as to not. Um, and, and my feeling is that they're not just going to, you know, I think they're going to press on those questions, in my opinion. Um, so I'm just offering myself uh, and, you know, if there were other folks that wanted to join in um, to help answer some of those questions, uh, because it is or it was obvious to me certainly by the site visit and from the pre-hearing conference call uh, that recreational trails and recreational usage um, is a real hot button topic for them. 
Yeah, they certainly showed uh, plenty of interest in their 11 pages that they gave us. I guess at this point, uh, what I would encourage you to do, Jamie, is to send us something in writing regarding those specific items that they mentioned to us with your suggestions as to how we should move forward. Uh, I, with, I mean, I'm, it, setting up meetings is problem, problematic with COVID. Uh, I'm just not into, uh, I'm recovering right now from some medical stuff, so I'm just yep. not into a lot of that stuff. But I, I'm willing to entertain any suggestions you may have. Uh, and at this point, we're far enough along in this stuff. The party status has been identified. And I'm not against hearing from uh, the community as far as their input. But it, it, uh, my, honestly, my focus is about gravel, whether or not we're going to get another stone out of that piece of land. I, I, I understand that. And I'm, I'm not trying to stop gravel from coming out of the, out of the pits. Um, that's not my intent here. Uh, my intent is to make sure that there's been inclusion in the recreational committee or uh, community in the process um, and trying to work with folks so that, you know, we as the users from the recreational community lose as little as possible. Uh, and my feeling is that the engineering firm uh, really didn't conduct any uh, interaction with that community when they put their uh, plan together. Um, you know, I, at one point, I believe there was a meeting with some recreational group, I don't know who it was, uh, back on May 7th in 2009, uh, I asked Dan Lindley if there were meetings from that get together. Uh, he said that he felt that those meeting minutes were taken by the engineer. I asked for a copy and I never received anything. So I have no idea. And at this time, I don't have any proof that shows me that the engineering firm or the town discussed any of this with the recreational community before it went forward. Uh, and I'm just trying to have a say so that, you know, we can, you know, have as little of a kerfuffle later on as possible. Uh, because I think that we, as a recreational community, are losing uh, a fair amount of trail there. Um, and I think with a little bit of creative thought, which I think engineers should have, uh, they should really be interested in trying to come up with a creative solution uh, to be able to find a way to, uh, to to not eliminate as much trail as they have. Well, I, I'm not. I'm really not arguing with you as far as the recreation, recreational community is concerned, uh, except they are not named in the uh, permanent process as having party status. But we have taken input from anybody during our meeting processes and our, our initial meeting last spring from anybody and everybody, uh, that was an open meeting uh, where we received a lot of input from the recreation mm -hmm. community. And uh, I, I think what, what land area is now gonna become fully open in phase one and phase two after reclamation is done, far exceeds the amount of acres we're gonna be using in phase three based on our limitations of the open pit that were given by the Bureau of Mines. Um, you know, the phase three is gonna be uh, obviously a moving target. As we excavate more materials, the, the, the pit area moves. There's four phases of the phase three, um, but I, it, uh, I don't think we're gonna disrupt trails just to disrupt trails. I think we're-, we're I, 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 I understand that. I understand that it's, that the intent is not to just go out and take away trail just because right. uh, the, 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 the unfortunate piece is that that initial haul road that comes in plays uh, is a major disruption to that trail network um, mm -hmm. because it is a very specific choke point to getting out of that trail network. Um, and if I had one item that I would want to discuss, it would be that one particular area and is there a way to come up with, a, like I said, a creative solution? Okay. Um, that being said, and your comment regarding party status, uh, I have had communications with Josh, and I'm not going to try and pronounce his last name, uh, the, the coordinator for the 250 board. Uh, but uh, yes, party status has been uh, decided, uh, but that the commission can also take on what is called 
a friend of the commission uh, to allow folks to who don't have party status to submit pre-filed testimony, uh, and then they can at that time choose to accept it uh, in their legal as part of their legal decision or not. Um, okay. So, um, you know, time will tell if, if I if I want to go and submit pre-filed testimony. Uh, but certainly, like I said, uh, that one particular item of that hall road. Uh, coming into phase three uh, is what is, I think, of most concern to me uh, and probably other recreational users. Okay. Well, Jamie, it's certainly good to have you have your input, and it seems like it would make sense to have you be sort of the conduit from the recreational people. And I don't know if you wanted to, to try to get together with them and present something like Eric said, put together an email for us, like, like you've read, read the Act 250 um, plan and uh, for us to be able to go forward with the best responses, it certainly may help us and help you guys to um, have a coordinated effort. I don't, I think like Eric says, we're not gonna probably all have a meeting, sit down together, but if you could get together with some of the recreational users, um, like Hank and yourself, and you know, I know there's a dozen or more um, that might be able to talk about um, how you might might go forward and help us with responses, you know? Uh, I, I, I can see what I, I, I will see what I can do, uh, but that idea of one person speaking for all is, you know, as it relates to uh, Katie's Falls, is, is an interesting topic, um, right. you know, because we don't have an organization that oversees that network. Um, and nobody that rides down there, recreates there, wants that to happen um, because mountain biking and trail networks have become very political and very bureaucratic. Um, and we would all very much like that to not happen at, at, at the Katie's Falls Network. Um, so I'm not sure as though I would be able to speak for all users down there, um, but uh, I would certainly be happy to put in my opinion uh, and let others know uh, that if they have opinions as well, that they can pass them on. That would be awesome. Yeah, that my, sounds great. My concern, Jamie, I, honestly, I, you know me. You've seen yep. how I'm built. I'm not built for speed, and I'm not built for fat tired bikes. I've got to stop. I'm fat. So <laughs> um, I don't want to I, I don't want to have the responsibility of interpreting from a group meeting uh, notes or minutes from a meeting like that to bring back to the board. I am concerned yep. that I would misinterpret it because I don't understand all the sports aspects of it. I would much rather have the input direct from you folks that use those trails. That's the most accurate way for us to get the information to us. Yep. And when do you need those by? Sooner the better. I don't expect we're going to see anything from our engineer until probably around uh, the early to middle part of February. Um, and that'll be a draft form from him. So if we had something by then, uh, we could actually bring that to his attention. Yeah, by the first of February. First week. Of first, first week of February, Jamie. If we could have something, that would be great. So that's a week. Yes. Two, two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. Okay. I will. I, I'll see what I can do. Um, in the meantime, um, is it possible for you folks to go back to the engineer? and find out if they do have copies of minute notes from whatever recreational meeting they had way back in 2019. We can find out about that. Yeah. We can and, can, and, and can I get a copy of that? And Dan Lindley has my email address. Yeah, I'll see what Tyler has. Yeah. yeah. He, Dan says he'll see what Tyler has. OK, great. Thank you very much, and thank you for your time. Thanks for your input, Jamie. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah. OK. Good night. Bob, this is Judy. Don't we also have some kind of document stating that the town was allowing people to use that land for recreational purposes until we had a need for it? I believe there was something like that. That sounds very familiar. There, there was a, a select board approved recreational policy um, for the New Hamill Pet property that was approved by select board. Um, we, we have found those records, yes we have. Yes, so the answer is yes, Judy. Okay, I'm very concerned that we're, we not, uh, the, the site is going to be lost on the reason we have this piece of land, 
and the cost it's going to be to our taxpayers if we are considering just recreational use of the land. And there has to be some kind of meeting of the minds because the property was bought for the specific purpose of the gravel pit. Well said, agreed. I totally agree. Okay, do we, um, do we have any more uh, conversation I was, I was, on that? Can you hear my, can you hear me, Matt Lindemer? Yes, go ahead. Hi everybody, uh, good evening, thanks. I am just here to bring across the question um, if the town of Morrisville is going to permit the operation of licensed cannabis retailers and integrated licensees subject to such municipal ordinance and regulation as the select board may lawfully adopt and implement. That was great. I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily looking for an answer. That was, um, that was written by the lawyers. I'm more or less trying to get, see if we're going to allow the voters to um, allow for the opt-in option for recreational dispensaries in the town of Morrisville come October 1st, 2022. Um, right now, nobody has asked the board to put that on this current town meeting. Right. Did you hear that? Right. So, yes, I did hear that. So that is what I would like to ask to uh, bring this to the town meeting. You have to do it in writing, right? But there would have to be some sort of a petition before it's being approved tonight. Right. Um, yeah. So it's, it's a little late. Um, it's a little late to try to do that for this town meeting because it has to be it has to be brought up tonight. You know, not just vocally. Okay. So when is the next town meeting? I guess that when's the best time to do this, and what do I need to do to make it brought up for the town meeting? Right. There, there won't be another town meeting for another year. Right, that would, it would be too late for this March time meeting. Yeah, March of okay. 20, 2022. So there's no way we can get it on for this year. It's it's too late for that to even consider putting on for voters to decide if uh, if they can opt in or not. It's going to be a huge benefit to the town. I think it'd be a shame to leave it out. I know. I guess it's late. I, I meant to come a couple weeks ago. Yeah. But I missed. Yeah, the deadline passed, isn't it? The deadline for petitions has passed. Yeah, like last Thursday or something, right? right? So I'm, yeah. just from what he, Mr. Lindemann is saying, he's not understanding our process. So if you could just quickly explain the process of our petition that has to be filed by a certain date in order to get on with the, the as an article for town meeting. I think that's what we're missing here. Yeah, do you, do you want to explain that? Yeah, the select board has a policy, you know, if you want to petition to have something added on the uh, actually statutory requirement, if you want to file a petition with the select board to add something um, to the warning, the petition needs to be signed by 5% of the voters and into the clerk's office by the statutory deadline. Uh, that statutory deadline was last Thursday. Okay, uh, understandable. I did know some of that. I guess I was unaware on the deadline. Um, so, okay, so this is going to be off the table then until next year. I guess that begs the question if we're um, going back to petitioning, you know, a certain percent of the voters, how do you go about doing that if, you know, if you're not going door to door this time of, during this time of the world? There, there are some platforms out there um, that allow you to collect electronic signatures. Yeah. Okay. We have okay. to allow electronic signatures. Okay, got it. Great. Um, all right, then, I guess uh, that it won't be dealt with until next year, then nothing I can do about it. Right, yeah, sorry about that. Okay, this well, is, uh, yeah, go ahead. This is Sarah, I'm the town clerk. I just wanted to chime in. The electronic signatures were for this town meeting only. Um, okay. There's there's nothing in state stats or nothing in, in the law for next year for electronic signatures at the moment. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, so when do we, when can I find out how we can, I guess, how can I get this on for next year then is my question, Sarah. So Matt, the best thing to do would be to email me. If you go to the Morristown website, my email's on there and I can start a conversation with you. And I don't know the deadline off the top of my head, but it's set by state statute. It's six weeks before town meeting. It's usually okay. around, um, January 15th, give or take. Okay. 
Um, and I can I see numbers and in, in a in a blank petition and all that. Okay, well, I will definitely shoot you an email, Sarah. And um, I guess if nothing else, it's something to hopefully think about. Okay, thanks, Matt. Yep, thank you. Do we have any more community concerns? Ron, do you want to speak about your issue? Yeah. Um, you don't have to yell. They can hear you. I'm sorry. Um, I thought I was going to wait until you went to the new business on item six, but I <clears throat> did send to uh, Dan Lindley uh, information for the board to look over. It has to do with um, a request for funding the uh, Morristown Conservation Commission. Uh, we did make an attempt to go with a petition, but we were screwed up on the date and we're late. So I looked at item six on the new business since you're review, reviewing and approving the warning that this might be an opportunity to still get our request on the as an article on the warning. Um, a year ago at this time, uh, with the meeting that I wasn't attending, uh, the board discussed our request at that time and it was taken off. So I was hoping that <clears throat> you'd look favorably at adding it this time. Uh, I think it might be a good measuring tool of how the voters feel in Morristown about funding conservation. You want to comment on that, Dan? Or oh, Dan? just so you know, I, I think we sent it around, but Ron has asked um, the, the board to put an article on the town meeting warning that would fund the Conservation Commission um, for the purchase of land or conservation efforts um, at um, one half penny on the grand list, or roughly $32,000. Um, just, I think that we do have money already, you know, that's out there right now for about $50,000, I think, Tina. Uh, yeah, there's more than $53,000. $53,000 currently available up to right now. Um, that, that's already kind of money in the bank for, for the Conservation Commission as well. Right, so this would be in addition to that. Correct. There's $63,000 available to the Conservation Commission already. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> that, if you knew that. Now, is this something we could have added as an article? No, I it. It's totally up to the board if they want to add it on as an article. Yeah. Are you guys looking for? Is, how is this different from the request we had uh, two weeks ago from um, uh, Imelda. Imelda? Yes. It's the same. We, did, we denied that at that time, too. That's right. Yeah, and since uh, you didn't meet the deadline with uh, signatures, and uh, it's up to us to go forward or not to go forward. Do we just want to set a precedent here? Or? Ron, this is Eric Dodge. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Hey, Ron, so I think I posed my, my concern before you know, on this topic. I'll just reiterate a little bit just from my standpoint. I don't speak for the board, just for myself. But I think if there's no plan to spend the money or no project that the money earmarked towards, I have an issue going to the taxpayers to ask for a tax increase just so we're going to dump $35,000 into a fund to be used at, at, at discretion of the Conservation Commission when there's no, no target for that money. We have the, the one cent that we asked for for the fire department that's targeted toward equipment, capital equipment. That helps us to keep our budget from going on a roller coaster ride, a more of a level playing field year to year. But, 
I, I'm concerned that we don't have a project mark in line. And I can tell you that you and I talked in a meeting not too long back. You talked about wanting to plant uh, a certain type of hardwood tree. I want to say it was elm, but I don't remember exactly. And I talked about the reclamation of the phase one and phase two of the gravel pit. Chestnut. Uh, chestnut. American chestnut. And uh, that, that might be a, a viable option to look at. That would be a project that you could actually put a dollar figure to that I would have no problem entertaining that type of a, a project and, uh, and funding toward that on a budget line item. But just to add a half a step to go into a fund to me doesn't make uh, good sense for the board to do. How about Brian or Judy? Do you have any comment? We do have projects that we're looking at. Uh, I don't know how much money will be involved with um, uh, acquiring rights to the Bugby Springs land and then the development of recreational use there. Uh, we're planning on working with the state of Vermont on making a parking lot at the Bryan Pond Road and that's close to the uh, Morristown Forest. We've had a lot of participation over there. Uh, we're still working with, uh, I'd rather say the village of Morrisville about something to do with Clark Park. This has been on the books for five years, still waiting on the federal people to give them a new license. So, and other things, <clears throat> We'll probably develop. Uh, we're tied in with CDs. Uh, we would have to extinguish those if we wanted to use money in the in the hurry. I'd like to point out that any monies that we spend, you you guys have an oversight on it. So, like I said, I think this would be a good test to see how the voters feel about conservation and the work that they do. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Do you have any comment, Gary, about I, uh, I don't know. I just got to... I got to say, I, I wouldn't go for it for this year because, I mean, we just barely talked to a uh, person that wanted to get an article on the... Uh, on the town meeting and we denied them uh, and I don't know how Amelda did turn out. I don't know if she ever got I haven't heard any more from her and her you know we required the same thing from her and I understand that this is a as a viable town commission but I'm not sure that they should be able to trump the rules either. Right. How about you Brian? You you can you hear me? <laughs> yes I can um, my thoughts are, and we put a bunch of money in, in their account already to do things like he's asking to do. I would rather see him, just like Eric said, come to us with some projects. We can we can change his um, money that he's handed from us in the beginning rather than put something there that's just sitting there adding up money and not going anyplace. I'd like to see some of it being used. And the worst thing is that bothers me is these other people that are trying to get on and they're late. I'm sorry it's late. If he maybe if he got there a little bit earlier too, Ron. I'm not saying it's a bad project. I just think we can try to do it a different way if you wanna. Put it in your budget. We might be able to increase your budget <coughs> next year. Thanks, Brian. How about you, Judy? I just feel that since we uh, turned down Imelda, we can't then, then agree to allow the Conservation Commission a, a, a free ride onto the ballot since we denied Imelda. That's a point well taken. How does that sound, Ron? Probably not good to you, but we're trying to be fair to everybody. Well, I guess uh, 
we we uh, if we plan up anything and we'll come before the before the board like we have in the past. We did yeah. spend seven thousand last year uh, with work on constructing access to the Morristown Force from the uh, Beaver Meadow parking lot. So, like I said, we have some things in mind. I have things in mind to do more with actual land conservation that <clears throat> might end up basically talking with other organizations like Stowe Land Trust and uh, and the Vermont Land Trust, but um, sometimes it's nice to help them with some funds. Uh, there was good news this morning in the Burlington Free Press, not in Memorial County, but 1,200 acres was conserved in the town of Shaftesbury. So there's organizations that are concerned about protecting the land and the environment, and my group is, is oriented towards that. Uh, we seem kind of strange oriented towards recreation also. Uh, we've been developing the trails in uh, Morristown Forest, and uh, there's one also I forgot to mention, that Sonny DeMars has mentioned a trail from Bridge Street over to the Morristown Corners Road, this involves three property owners. I've been talking to them, um, something that we're still working on. So we do work, physical work in the summertime. So like I said, um, I, I, I'm just looking as an indicator from the public on this particular article, uh, the money that's there in escrow some of it came from the forest harvest in the Morristown Forest. Uh, I guess I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Robert. Yes, uh, I just wanted to say one more thing is we we all appreciate everything your group does. You know, we value you. And um, like Brian said, if you have uh, pinpointed a project or what Eric said, you can come to us, you know, and um, we can we can see what we can do because uh, we do appreciate what you do and we know you do a lot. So don't be scared off. But this time we can't uh, we can't allow you to be put on the on the ballot when when we've not let others. So I understand that. And, uh, and <laughs> as a result of last year, we did make an attempt with a petition. We got up as a high as 136, but unfortunately. We didn't realize that the deadline was last Thursday. So right. let's appreciate uh, my coming before the board. And have yeah, a good if evening. You to, uh, if you want to listen to what Sarah said, uh, from what I heard, it's about six weeks before town meeting that that's due. So you've got plenty of time before the next one to get those petitions. So, Thank you. All right, do we have any more community concerns? Okay, hearing none, we'll do uh, liquor control. Make a motion to have a I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now in liquor control. We have so there, yep, there are applications this time. There's five renewals, um, RL Valley for both locations, uh, premium properties, which is Tomlinson's, Black Diamond Barbecue, and the VFW. Okay, do we do we know if Richard or Jason, do you know about this? Yeah, she looked at them earlier. Than we They're okay? Yep. All right, sounds good. Make a motion to approve all five. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. There's a motion to come out of liquor control. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now back in the regular select board meeting. Next, new business. 
Number one, discuss redevelopment of Sonoco gas station with the planning council. Todd, can you hear me? I hear you, Bob. Welcome. I know there's been a lot of scuttlebutt out there and lots and lots of uh, posts on social media and front porch forum. And I know you've had inundated with calls and emails and I have too. And um, so what do you think? Well, the um, this isn't really my agenda item. The board wanted to talk about it, so I don't want to steal their thunder. Um, right. I can give you a little background if you want. Um, the uh, Briefly, is some background, and for anyone who's going to watch this on cable access, uh, the owners made a decision to discontinue the use of the gas station. They really couldn't. Because of the size limitation, it's a little more than a quarter of an acre. They couldn't put enough uh, money into it to, uh, it wasn't enough space to put enough money into it to make it profitable enough to continue. Uh, most gas stations down have bigger gas pumps, have bigger convenience stores. Gas isn't really a profit leader anymore. They get you on the $3 Gatorade, Gatorade and the $2 bag of Pringles. That's where they make their money. So um, the tanks have been taken out. That's what we saw a couple weeks ago, the uh, removal from the ground. And uh, the project, the property will be sold in the next couple of weeks to, uh, I assume, the highest bidder. They're not going to hold on to the property once it's not a revenue producing asset for the company. They want it written off their books. So I expect it to change hands in a couple of weeks. And the, and the most uh, obvious question I get all the time, what's going to happen there? I, I don't know that yet because uh, the new buyer will drive that, obviously. Then once we know who the new buyer is, I'll have a better understanding of what can go there or might go there. There are some zoning controls that will shape what goes there. Uh, we can get into that if we want, but um, I'm not sure that's really a discussion for tonight. Okay, it sounds good. Does somebody else have any comment about it or input? I'm glad this was brought to our attention. I'm, I'm hoping there will be some kind of plan that makes it um, something that looks nicer in the downtown area. Has there been any thoughts or ideas, Todd? Um, I, I know what it, I know there are a few different developers in town interested in purchasing the property. Each of them will do something dramatically different there. Um, a, uh, it can't be a car repair business. We don't allow those uh, new uses like that downtown that's been discontinued there for quite some time. Uh, could be brought back as a gas station. Um, obviously, it's a non-conforming use, but I don't think any of the people looking to buy that I'm aware of, and again, there could be people looking that I'm not aware of, I don't know everything, um, or want to do a gas station there. Most likely, it will be a, a apartment, some sort of commercial storefront. The, new, the zoning does require anything built there be built out to the sidewalks or within eight and a half feet of the sidewalk. So kind of like the building you guys are in for the meeting, those of you who are present in the meeting room, uh, that building is within eight feet of the sidewalk. Any building on that corner will be eight feet of the sidewalk, has to be two stories tall, and there can't be parking between the sidewalk and the building. So you can't build a strip mall there, a little like mini strip mall. So whatever gets built there in theory is going to look like it belongs in the downtown. There are also some uh, minimal design requirements and some historic preservation requirements requirements that new building would have to follow that goes in that out goes in that location so I think uh, if all goes according to plan the DRB eventually will approve a nice building in that location that will be substantial and that will uh, uh, be a value to the downtown for years to come hopefully great thanks for the info Todd Is there any yeah, we just don't control it right now because the developer all depends on the developer who buys it and there isn't enough space there to put if the, someone develops the property to put a little green space, is there? A anyone who's going to develop the property, Judy, is going to max that property out. And um, uh, they, they actually, as a gas station, they'd be worried about the green space, the previous owners, because uh, potential ca contamination of the property. They're going to want that property completely covered with buildings and pavements. Uh, the only way to do green space there would obviously be the town to buy it or a partner with someone to buy it. But the developers that I know are looking for it will not, would not be put, I don't want to speak for anybody, but you don't make any money off green space. So uh, you're going to see buildings and parking there um, if the developers that I know are looking at it are looking to buy it. But that's the point of the planning council discussion. I think there are some members on the call who asked for this item. I didn't ask for the agenda item, 
we want to see if the town has any interest in partnering with someone or buying it. Is there anyone from the planning board that wants to comment? I'm seeing anyone there. All right, well, thanks for the information and um, we'll see what happens. Okay, thanks guys. Yep. Oh, Next. Sorry, Judy, thank you all. Discuss mailing absentee ballots. Sarah? So uh, the governor signed in effect today, Act H48, that um, allows a couple of things. It allows town meeting date to be pushed back. Um, it allows mailing of all absentee ballots, and it allows the Secretary of State office to uh, set directives uh, that they think uh, will help towns based on COVID. They, Dan and I attended a couple trainings um, last week and based on the letter that we've uh, received today from the governor, they're really encouraging that towns have to uh, work closely with their supervisory unions and um, run the election the same way as much as possible. And so um, I am i don't think that we should push our town meeting date back. I think you've already made the motion to go by Australian ballot. Um, I'm questioning whether or not uh, we should mail ballots to everybody or not based on this new legislature. Um, in this new act. I, my recommendation would be um, that we align with the school, that if the school is going to mail them all, um, that we should mail them all. And if the school votes for just mailing them as requested, that we do the same, just so that we uh, there's no confusion from our voters. Why did they get one ballot? Why didn't they get the other? just to make things as simple and consistent as possible. That sounds good to me. What, is he, what do you guys think? I, I am not in favor of mailing out ballots. We've had for decades in the process, if someone wants to, they can call, email, or write to ask the ballot. It'll be sent to them. I think it's staff here to have to mail out all that stuff, to put it all together, to get it out in the mail. Uh, I think we're on a very short timeline when things go with town meeting in early March. So I am not in favor of doing mail out ballots. Right. How about you, Gary? I agree with Eric. I think that if somebody requests an absentee ballot, fine, mail it out. But as far as general election, mail every voter a ballot. I don't. I don't think the town staff should be burdened with that. And, Unless, of course, like Sarah said, if the school decides to do it, then I agree we ought to both do the same thing. Right. Yeah. Uh, for clarification, I, I have no idea what the school is going to do. Um, I don't know if it's on their agenda today. Um, we will be allowed to mail them out. So if um, we have to mail them all out for the school anyways, um, it would be the matter of putting one more ballot in, in the, in the Yeah. And and we have no control what the school is going to tell us to do, what to do. Right. How about Brian or Judy? You have any comments? I agree. If the if the school is mailing out ballots, I would agree that we'd mail out a ballot also. You, Brian. Okay, this is Brian. <clears throat> I don't agree with sending them out unless they're requested. Is my opinion. But again, if they're doing it the other way and it's all put together. We probably could go with it, but maybe we ought to be the one to step up and say it the other way, and maybe they'll follow us. <laughs> yeah. No All problem right. in mailing out ballots as long as they request one. Okay. There's nothing we have to act on. Anyway. Um, Sarah, when do you want? I, I think they do kind of need to act on this very soon. It depends what the school does. Uh, we don't have to. Yeah, do it. it's it's sort of hard. It would be nice to act tonight, but I 
the school wasn't even meeting till tonight and I didn't get a response back really if they're voting on it or not. Um, just if we're going to do it, we need more time to plan than, than <laughs> the more yeah. time we have to plan, now, the better, if that makes sense. Just because uh, the BCA has instructed me to send a postcard to everybody to let them know that that let our voters know that Australian ballot is um, that town meetings by Australian ballot um, and the ways to get your ballot. And I can't really do it until I know what we're going to do. So I really need both the school and the town to make decisions. So it Sarah, like be I can check with the school in a few minutes. Can we come back to this subject then in a in a in a few minutes and I'll check? Yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What about the uh, discuss Australian ballot in accordance with Act 162? So at the um, meeting, one of the trainings that Dan and I just recently took, um, you already voted to use the Australian ballot system, but in the motion it needed to say in accordance with Act 162, because that's the authorization that you have to do it. And so it's just, um, we need to uh, ratif ratify, yeah, ratify the motion that and include that language. It's really housekeeping kind of thing. I move to adopt the Australian ballot system for voting on all articles on the 2021 annual town warning as authorized by Act 162. Will that do it, Sarah? Yes. <laughs> I have a motion to a second. Second. Is there any further it, discussion? It may not be necessary. If I hadn't been in the training, I wouldn't have even known. But because I went to the training, I'd rather do it correct. Good to cross the T's. All in favor say aye. 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 Brian, I'm sorry. Can you, can you repeat Brian? it again? Brian's an aye. Judy. Oh. I was I was consulting. Can you tell me what that was again, please? <laughs> we had a motion to uh, um, adopt your Australian ballot system in accordance with Act 162. It's just a housekeeping issue. We already voted to um, go to Australian ballot. Oh, okay. I. It's Judy. Any of both. Motion is passed. Thank you. Does that work, Sarah? Yes. Okay, discuss delinquent taxes. Um, That's you too, Sarah. It is me. So in uh, December, we turned over the list of delinquent taxes to uh, Jim Barlow and asked him to send demand letters, uh, which he did. The deadline was Friday, and now is here's a list of um, delinquent tax payers that still haven't paid since receiving his um, demand letter. So uh, I bring the list back to you to see if you wanna move forward um, on tax sale procedures and uh, hiring Jim Barlow to do so. I make a motion for discussion. Yeah. I move to proceed with tax sale on properties that are in arrears of $1,000 or more. I have a motion to have a second. I'll second it. Is there any further discussion? So, Sarah, I, I have a question. The ones that are less than a thousand dollars, they don't get a buy. We continue to send them letters and attempt to collect, correct? Correct. And then when they reach a thousand, probably you know, next year, then they would go up for tax sale. But yes, they're not written off. They continue to get a notice. Right. So this motion is simply uh, to keep us from spending more on attorney's fees than the actual taxes owed, correct? Well, um, it's also because I am an appointed delinquent tax collector, not uh, elected. And so I don't have the authority to engage uh, in services with the attorney. It all has to come through the board for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Brian and Judy. Aye. Brian. Brian. Aye. Judy, aye. 
Okay. I have um, an answer about the um, ballots being mailed by the school board. Okay. They are going to mail Australian ballots to all voters, all registered voters in the town. Okay, so what do we want to do? I heard we we want to do that as well. It's up to the board on how you want to proceed. I make a motion that we go along with uh, with the school board, just due to the fact that uh, makes it easier. I understand that the uh, town clerk's office is going to have to stuff and send those out anyway, so it might slide one more piece of paper to it, same envelope, and see it down. I prefer it the other way, but. Does it make sense? There is, um, <laughs> it is a lot more work for us. I will say that there is, um, I forgot to mention that there is money from the state also to help us um, with the mailing of it. Okay. There was emergency, I, there was emergency um, funding that was also approved. Okay, I have that motion. I have not have a second. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, is there any further discussion? Eric. <laughs> Eric is opposed to it, as he spoke before. How about you, Brian? Yeah, I'm opposed. Okay. I'll say this. I think it's easy that the school board to dictate to increase the workload for our town staff. When they don't have any staff looking envelopes and stuff and envelopes. Right. So that's my my angst with this piece. There is a process in place for voters to get an absentee ballot. And I, I don't agree with our staff having to go the extra step of adding our ballot into another envelope. I, I just forget where you know, my vote. Right. But like, like as Gary said, as long as they've got to do it anyway for the school, put one more ballot in there. Um so all in favor by roll call vote, Gary. Hi. Judy. Hi. Brian. No. Eric. No. And I'm I. Motion is passed. <laughs> A divided vote. Something doesn't have to link with taxes because we, uh, Sarah and I will need you to. Or uh, James Barlow to do. Yeah, we did, didn't we? Um, you didn't. You didn't actually approve this. You approved the, the tax sale. But you did oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Signing the letter. Yeah. Okay, do I hear a motion on that? Uh, I make a motion to approve the letter. Engagement letter. The engagement letter with uh, Barlow. And have me sign it. Yes. Second. And second. Okay, all in favor say aye by roll call, Gary. Aye. Brian. Aye. Judy. Aye. Eric? Aye. And I'm I. Motion is passed. Yeah, I signed it. Okay, next EMS vaccination briefing. Bill, welcome. Thank you. Um, so we just wanted to. Um, Bring you up to date and in the loop on what's going on with uh, with uh, vaccinations, both locally and a little more globally. Um, now that uh, the state is wrapping up the 1A tier, uh, which was healthcare workers and first responders, um, we're looking now to expand that out and use first responders uh, statewide uh, to do the next round of vaccinations going forward. Uh, population of Vermont 650,000, realistically, probably about 425,000 people are going to need to be vaccinated uh, based on people who are declining it or not needing it uh, due to exposure, things like that. Um, so, um, as of, uh, we've been working on this with State EMS and the Department of Health for a couple of weeks now. As of uh, last Thursday's uh, uh, Zoom call specifically about this item, uh, about 25 services have signed up for this with, uh, with EMS and about 350 EMS providers statewide uh, to go out there and augment uh, our public health colleagues in getting these vaccines out there. Uh, what does that mean for us here in Morristown? 
Uh, what that means is that we've got uh, currently about 15 to 17 members of our staff uh, that we've pushed supplemental training out to. Initially, it was going to be our advanced level providers, our advanced EMTs, and our paramedical level staff because that intramuscular injection is already built set. Uh, in order to put more people in the loop, the state has uh, dropped uh, it down to the EMT, to the basic, uh, the basic provider level. Uh, with additional training for them. Um, that training was released late, late last week. We've pushed that out to all of our staff. Uh, we're in the process starting uh, hopefully tomorrow and into, uh, into the weekend and into next week of getting our people in to do skills to demonstrate that. Uh, and then uh, uh, we'll be sending a ROS to the state uh, of those people who are gonna be clear on our end to augment uh, uh, and supplement uh, working in vaccine clinics. Uh, uh, the, the process is going to be hopefully, as I understand it, uh, uh, initially supplementing in vaccine clinics. Uh, the next step after that would be kind of pop-up clinics where uh, they would call me or Corey and say, hey, we need three people for a clinic that we're setting up two days from now. The one that is not scheduled. Um, and then the next step after that would actually be going out and uh, 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 supplementing our home health friends uh, in uh, making home visits to people who cannot make it to the clinics. Uh, in retrospect, we look kind of wise that we brought an ambulance last year that just happened to have a refrigerator. So we have the ability to keep these vaccines cold uh, while, we're, uh, while we're going out to deliver them. Uh, in return, uh, it will provide a, uh, an unexpected revenue stream uh, to EMS and the town. Uh, it'll provide an unexpected revenue stream to some of my staff uh, because uh, we'll be invoicing the state for their time and getting that back and then passing that on to our staff. Uh, so that's kind of the big picture of how it's working. Uh, just this afternoon, they uh, kind of pushed the goalposts a little bit on us and uh, released another training that I'll finish reviewing in the morning and push out to the rest of our staff tomorrow and get that get that piece of it done. Uh, but as of now, we're hopefully looking to be uh, uh, online and uh, ready to do this uh, uh, starting next week. Uh, and certainly by certainly by February 1st, unless something else gets pushed back. Uh, one of the few things I'm not old enough to remember is uh, the push with uh, Jonas Salk getting the polio vaccine back. Uh, this is, uh, to me, uh, the historic and a historic event that we are pushing out these vaccines with more on the way to our large population, uh, and we clearly have a skill set in the EMS both locally and statewide that allows us to be part of this. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's uh, something that in talking with Dan is clearly in our wheelhouse, and clearly something that we think we should be doing. That's great. Okay. Bill, I, want, I really want to go into some of the details just okay. so the board understands yeah. what the grant agreement says, um, because there's some things there that are clearly revenue stream. Like right now, I think the, the state's going to pay us just simply $400 a week just to be able to provide you know, people to go do this. So that's funny as it comes in to offset the overall budget. Um, there's, a, there's also a training system. You know, somebody is getting paid $50 an hour, I believe, to do the training, and there's fifty dollars an hour to receive the training. Is that what I understand? Uh, it's, it's it's all together. Right. Fifty dollars an hour training. Okay. And then then there's the direct payment to the town. So I'm just going to use. Let's say we send three people out to a clinic to do something. The town will be able to invoice those the state at seventy dollars an hour per person. What we don't have, and I know Bill's going to work on it, is what's the rate of pay that we're going to pay these people that go out and do it. And then there's got to be the corresponding offset to the town expenses to do that, because that does increase. We've talked about this, but we don't have that set yet. Okay. So there, there's that. And the other thing is, and I think it's very important, one of the most important things is you, you can't kind of double dip on this. So if Bill's working on our time clock, he can't double bill. He, right. he can't pay him twice, or the paid staff in particular to be able to do that. Okay. So <coughs> the, the hard part on this one is, since it's a volunteer staff, yeah, we can pay them to go out and do it. It's that rate of pay and what we're going to establish for that rate of pay. And I don't think you have anything established for that. Yeah, no, no. We're, we're, we're still in the, the gearing up, pushing up training mode. So, um, 
So I mean, that's something you could figure out. Yeah, based right. on training and everything. Right, right. The justification sure. levels and right. that. So it's it's you know there's still a lot of details there. You know the ambulance money. Of course, we're sending out our ambulance. So I think it's twenty dollars a mile. Right. Something like that. That's a direct reimbursement to the town. You know that offsets our expenses. So it's it's a revenue in line in. The hard part, I think, on this one is, is working out the pay rate for the volunteers. Right. So, um, yeah, and just everybody's aware, you know, they're, they're not getting paid twice to go out. I mean, right. and the other thing that really is important too is, is that we won't let this disrupt our 911 service. Right. There, you know, there's still a staff ambulance. We're not going to say, you know, we're we're not going to stop providing 911 to be able to go out. Right. Right. Well, this will not involve our dedicated scheduled 911 staff. This will be supplemental staff coming in. Simply to perform this, uh, to perform this role. Uh, uh, the example would be if we uh, uh, were informed that we need to go make a house visit to deliver some vaccinations, we would bring two people in to do that, or at least one person in to do that. Uh, because once we give the vaccination, we've got to sit there for 30 minutes, right. and we can't do that with a 911 crew. Uh, and if it comes in uh, uh, the state, it's been clear with the state too that uh, uh, you know if it. Uh, if you can't participate in a in a clinic because it affects your 911 staffing, well then you just don't do the clinic. Then. Right. Yeah. Uh, they're not going to they're not going to avoid anybody's contract uh, for right. for having to pass on a day because you needed coverage. So I I just want to jump out because I know it's going to be watched on uh, with the the, uh, the the folks going to watch recording this. I know how our staff can can jump to the occasion. But I want to be clear that we may be ready training wise next week, but there will be an official announcement exactly. with logistics behind it. So exactly. I don't want anybody confusing. We're not saying this is going to start next week. We're right. saying, you're saying you've got a lot of training knocked out already. We're, we're close to being to that point, but the right. logistics of location, times, and, and right. so on. And when, then, when, uh, we're, we're, we're hoping to, that when, the state is ready when it's announced by the Department of Health, when it's pushed out to the health districts, that our staff will be be there ready and lockstep with them to go. Got it. Awesome. I just want to clarify that. Right. And location wise too is something we have to work on as well. Yeah, right. We have like we they they gave us ten, a tentative schedule today of when the fixed clinics would be, but no idea where they will be. So that's kind of kind of what we're looking at right now. And we've got more training to push out, but they just gave us the same. I'm sorry. It's good for all the listeners to hear that. Okay. Thank you. So they're coming, and we're happy to be part of it. Sounds good. Cool. Thanks. All right. We were going to do uh, approved town meeting morning, but we're going to do the uh, budget first. Review and approve updated budget. And you guys really need to thank Tina for doing all this work on the budget. Um, Thanks, Tina. She, she's the one that, that really went out. We, we've talked about a lot of different things, and the budget's kind of one of the things that, just because of Tina, Tina's always going back and looking for things that we can change <laughs> to, to help lower the budget or, or save money. It's, it's a constant thing that she does. And in this particular case, she really came through. Um, the other thing, there's a couple changes in Tina, if I get this wrong. Let me upside the head and let me know. Um, obviously, with the, 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 the Act 250 response that we got, or not, yeah, but there's no way that we're going to be able to extend and grab a lot of our investment this summer. Um, you know, we're not going to even get a response in, in until March. Um, you know, it's going to take a while to schedule hearings. It, 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 you know, it's going to take a while to, to get everything done. And for us to sit here and say that we'll be able to get sand and gravel out of doing handle this this summer isn't realistic. I think we would be lying to you if we told you, oh yeah, we can get there. I, I just don't even think it's realistic. So Kevin did some research and, and tried to find out, you know, what we could where first where we could get particularly sand from because it's a limited supply out of Royal County. It's not easy to buy. Um, just for example, they do can supplies. They if they tried to supply us, they would exceed your extraction extraction rate. They wouldn't be in compliance with their permit. Um, and, and quite honestly, you know, as everybody's talking about this, it is it's getting to be a harder resource to find. And I, I think that's obvious. Um, with anybody out there that's looking for it, Gary, you've been in the business for years. I don't have to tell you that. Um, 
so in, in gravel, so we found around and we, we figured that for next year, we need to put another $140,000 into our budget um, to be able to purchase stain and gravel for one fiscal year. It's a very valid number, um, and it's the best number that we can come up with on short term. Um, and in percentage points, that's about 2% on your budget. So um, that's, that's a lot of money. She was right when she came to me. It didn't make sense for us to sit here and go, oh, gee, we can just take it out of reserves. That's a big chunk of money to, to take out of reserves. Um, we know it's an oncoming expense. Once again, we can't lie to you and say that we're going to be able to get into our, our pit and be able to extract gravel next year. Um, that just is not realistic. And, and we'd be able to feel it's our position to say here and lie to the select board or the voters for that matter and say it's all going to be able to work out yeah. in a couple months. It's just not realistic. <clears throat> we're already over a year into this permit application, well over a year in preparation of getting there to say that we're going to have something that's going to able to be able to do that this summer. It's just not realistic, and we prefer not to do that with, with anybody. I, I think it, it would be disrespectful to both the board and the voters if we did that. So we had another hundred forty thousand dollars in, and then Tina really started looking at what we could do. Of course, we've had a, an HRA or health reimbursement account for a number of years, and health reimbursement accounts work great for the employees. It's worked great for the voters. And what we looked at is is how healthy is that fund, and and what we can do with it. Right now, it, it's very healthy fund. Um, we are committed. I think the board is committed to keeping it funded at healthy levels. But once you get into next fiscal year you will have more than adequate money that you can take some of that money and use it as a revenue line to offset expenses next year and not hurt the health uh, reimbursement account at all. Um, it keeps it funded at a very healthy <coughs> level. Um, we'll meet all our liabilities for the employees. And, and you know, quite honestly, we've been working with this for years. And it took us a while to understand what our reimbursement rates would be, how much it would expense per year. We've always stayed, we've watched it. And we both feel next year that you'll be able to take about $225,000 out of that as a revenue line to offset those expenses. Uh, and I, I think we're, we're both very comfortable with that. We looked at it again this afternoon just to be sure um, that, you know, that's, that's really going to work and we want to be sure. So what all that does, and it's all shifting around, did I miss anything else, Stephen? No, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, we were able to get the budget down to a 3.3% increase. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but once again, we didn't feel it was responsible um, from us to say that we're going to be able to be able to get into that that pit this year um, to extract gravel. And I think Judy, you were talking about the expense. Um, you know, that's a one-year expense. So, you yes. Know, when you get in there, you know, I, I think you're going to start to see those rates go up because I think other towns will will run them. I, I can appreciate everybody's, you know vision of, of what that land should be um, but I think you know I'm, I'm the guy that, that tries to get things done for the board and for the community for that matter and you're looking at some pretty significant increases um, in, in your taxes if this continues on like this it, it's, a, it's a valuable resource um, that land you know is, is what's for up there for gravel extraction I think everybody realizes that but that, I think that gives you an idea of what the expense is. I think that's a little bit on the low. I think Kevin put in enough gravel to regravel one mile of road. Yeah. We have 70 miles of, of road that we have to gravel. It doesn't really include any projects. So, you know, and we, we do use some of those things for that. So, um, yeah, it's a big chunk of change. Once again, it, it's, it's 2% um, on, your, uh, on your budget. So you think if, if we were, we're not adding this, we'd be able to have that budget down to probably about, you know, 1.3, 1.4. It gives you an idea. Taxpayers paid $850,000 for the Duke Hamill land. Yes. How many years ago? 30? Uh, no, I think it was in the 90s. 90s. Yeah. Uh, 20, 25 plus years. Yeah. You know, they paid that kind of money for it. You know, hundred and forty thousand dollars in one year. I, I think it was in the late eighties, early nineties. Right. I thought it was yeah. nineties. You know, well we just oh, the bond just settled out. Yeah, I was thinking ninety one, ninety two. Ninety two, I think is when it was signed. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody yeah. yards of sand you use a year. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
roughly have that big. Yeah, you know, I, I can't remember the exact total, but you know, Kevin Kevin put together the numbers and we went out with what he suggested. So I can't remember, but you know, we, we really, from my perspective, I looked at the budget numbers. I don't remember what the cost is or anything. Um, but you know, I didn't. I, I do worry about some of these other pits that are out there. Um, being able to supply the sand, and it's a valid concern. Um, you know, the, the, there's extraction rates and there's limits on all these trips out there. <coughs> Quite honestly, <coughs> good quality gravel is hard to find. Right. Yeah. Hello, uh, hello, this is Kevin. Kevin, how you doing? To answer, good. To answer Gary's question, we average right around 10,000 yards of road sand every year. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Well, just I might have uh, access to another source, but I'll uh, that'll help. Thank you. Welcome. This is, this is Judy. I just think it just bears to needs to be repeated. Just how much money we are asking the taxpayers to cough up um, because. There have been people who feel that the land is better used for recreational purposes than for the purpose it was purchased for. Thank you, Judy. I, I'm going to continue to be the voice of the gravel pit because I, I'm a lead on the highway department, but um, near and dear to my heart, uh, $850,000 was the purchase price a little less than 30 years ago. This year, we're estimating $140,000 for road sand. And a very minimal amount of gravel trash or gravel to uh, take care of our, our roads. It, it is not enough to take care of our roads. Uh, so that dollar amount could easily go up. Uh, in the event of uh, a natural disaster, we have to rely on our uh, undesignated funds, which were depleted as of the Halloween storm, and we still have not been reimbursed from payment on those funds either. So uh, I appreciate you not going to undesignated funds for the budget. Uh, I, I I agree with Judy. It's very important for folks to understand. I I don't dismiss the value of the recreation on that land. I'm not their enemy. I, I just have to focus on the gravel more than the recreation because if we lose the ability to extract gravel from that pit with the money we have invested, the materials we've taken out of the, the first two phases have probably paid back the taxpayers pretty close. I, I haven't done the math. Um, but if we aren't able to gravel out of the, the third phase of this, that line item is going to no, do nothing but go up. Okay. That's a huge increase to our tax. 30 years or 29 or whatever it is. But, you know, I remember when I first got on the board and we talked about the gravel pit and we talked about the, the Act 250 permit and, and there was some, you know, wording in there about we were allowing the use of recreational purpose to, in addition to growing out gravel, but that property was bought for gravel. It wasn't bought for recreation. And, you know, I think at one time we could have posted it and not allow, allowed any recreation. And now I almost wish we had because, because of all this, the Act 250 is given the recreation such a consideration that we may very well lose it for the extraction of gravel. And I gotta believe that the majority of townspeople would not be too happy to hear that, myself included, because it will continue to drive the property taxes up for many years to come if this all goes away. So that's my comment on the whole thing. Kevin, are you still there? Yes, yes I am. Uh, how, approximately how many yards of gravel do you use in a typical year, along with the 10 toes? Well, I mean, the last few, last couple of years that I've been there, we've only scrimped by with about 3,000 yards. I mean, it, if I try to put down six, six inches of gravel on a mile of a road at 24 feet wide, you're talking about 3,200 yards of gravel. Now, because that phase two is starting to run out, good gravel. I mean, Kevin, I'm 99% positive. We had to buy gravel last year, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. We, we yeah. Actually bought yeah. yeah. There's too much clay from both phase yeah. two. It's, it's just. Yeah. We, we found something about a lot, and then 
um, the other thing is too is I don't think we have a lot of stone to crush either, which saved a significant amount of money. I told I mentioned to Dan, this is Judy, this is the second time, at least the second time I can recall that Dan has predicted something and it's come true. He said if the, the recreation trails were going to kind of mess us up in this whole process. Oh yeah, I knew I knew it also. I knew it a long time ago. And a couple particular people that also add to it. There's gonna come a day when that entire property is recreational. Yeah. And right now there's more value under the grass than there is on top. Yeah. Uh, let's let's let them get together a price and they'll buy it for five million dollars and then we'll buy all the gravel we want somewhere else. <laughs> That's my idea. Anyway, let's go back to the budget thing. Well, that's the, the changes. So I don't think there's any other changes that we made to budget. But, but you know, they, they really, really like you know, I, I didn't do anything here because it was Tina who was last year. Um, she's the one who was able to find the stuff to keep working the budget. And so I think we got it to, to more acceptable levels. So do we want a motion to? We've got the right here. So yes. Okay. I make a motion to rescind the prior motion. To accept the budget is presented. I have a motion in a second. Is right for the. Does that, does that mean we throw away all the old pages from the budget book and submit it with the no. new pages? No. So I think you probably just got all your new budget book pages today, Judy. So just look through that and see. Some of them are definitely to be replaced. Okay. Thanks. It's really the overview that, that's changed. Okay. Are you attentive? Uh, so, uh, I know you're you sound reasonably comfortable with these numbers using the HRA account. So, uh, being in the legislature, what I was, I just want to make sure we don't get in the same predicament they are down there with the. Retirement fund and the state employees retirement fund. Well, this is the first year that we that I've ever done a true up of this account because we wanted to give it some time to figure out, you know, what we use, what the pattern was, so we would know how much was reasonable to fund in a budget. Mm -hmm. We started funding it at like 70% or 75%, then it went to 72. This coming year it's in the budget for 55% of the total liability. And by my calculation, even by putting it, um, I, you, in a calculation sheet, you'll see in the back. But um, my calculations say that we will have a maximum, we will fund 75% of the maximum liability in that account. So whatever, you know, you post to pay for everybody, you're going to always have 75% in that account of that. The chance of everybody using it is not going to happen. Right. And, um, no, I'm not. I'm not questioning your figures or anything. No, I'm no. just the tone that the the state is now at a six hundred million dollar underfunded liability for just that one. And we were that's the reason why we wanted to look at it because you know quite frankly that HRA is, is I think done great things for for the employees. I mean now realistically. You know, I think most employees love their pay is their premiums. <laughs> they save them a lot of money, so it's to save the town a lot of money to be able to do that. So we were pretty concerned, and we wanted to make sure we were right before we brought it to you. Yeah. Um, because it, it has, I mean, we, we've really lowered the, uh, the town's health care cost. You know, it's almost like we're a little bit self insured, and none of us would ever be level. Are, are comfortable being able to say that we dropped that level of protection for the employees below that 75 percent level and that's the reason why we really go back and look at that and so this is quite honestly here is a conservative estimate i, I anticipate yeah. that we're actually going to have more than 225 that we're over but i just did 225 because we've got half a year left here to have some funds to spend mm -hmm. you know for people for their health insurance or their health care needs so I wanted to be a little bit conservative on uh, it. I appreciate that. And I, like I said, I'm just bring it up as part of the discussion. Well, it's a good question. And the final problem that we have with this too is because the, the HRA runs on a calendar year from January to December with the health insurance, and our budget bridges that <coughs> on a fiscal year. Yeah. So it's, it's hard for us to be exactly 
right, but we, you know, we can predict with, with some level of comfort that, yeah, we'll be okay and we'll be able to do this. Well, this is really a one-time visit to this. Yes. And we're in this position because we started, you know, at those higher percentages, but we have every year trimmed those percentages. Yes. So the taxpayers aren't floating a bunch of money in an account that just is not doing anything. We're Correct. trying to trim it without creating pain. Correct. So and we have we're in a position this year to be able to do this. I don't foresee us being able to do this again. No, um, and we didn't want to change the budget line for next year because I think it's important that the budget line stays in there like it is, so that there's not a big up and down swing right. in, in your budget. It just didn't, we we don't want to do that. Just like with the capital budget, how we try to manage that. I think it's important that everybody like, you're going to be able now. I think in the future years be able to fund that HRA somewhere between 55 and 60 percent and keep it still funded for 75. You may have to go up a little year, or may have to down a little bit, but it won't be a big jump and down. That's what we really wanted to avoid it when we started this, that it wouldn't have a lot of swing in it because I think that would, would cause you more problems. So we've been able to do that and once again we looked at these numbers a couple of times and we're, we're both comfortable also with what we said in front of you like that. But you're right, it's a one-time thing. And this is our first real chance to really take a look at this and see how well it's doing. Um, but it won't be there in future years. It's fortuitous because we do have this big expense that we have to have next year. Okay. All in favor say aye by roll call. Gary? Aye. Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Eric? Aye. And I'm aye. Motion is passed. I make a motion to approve the updated FY2122 proposed budget as presented. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye by roll call. Gary? Aye. Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Eric? Aye. And I'm aye. Motion is passed. Okay, next. Uh, do you want to do the town meeting morning now? So this is a collaboration of uh, mostly Sarah and Tina and myself. Um, you'll see so a lot of different changes because the Truth Australian ballot this year. Um, and through the training that Sarah and I went through, we also found some stuff that we really don't need to have uh, on the ballot. So we've been able to streamline it quite a bit. Yeah, I do that. Um, and, and just really you know, kind of cut to the, the chase. Um, you also see that the informational meeting is, is set um, in the warm so that everybody knows when that will be. Um, we've asked um, Shaft to fill his role as moderator and lead that meeting, which I think kind of back to the tradition of, of town meeting and, and let him run the meeting and the select board of staff be able to answer questions. Yeah. What will we do without electing a fence viewer? Gary, keep your towels on your property, please. Right, do you, you still get to appoint that position, Eric? Oh, we have to point that one? That's a point. That's actually been off for a while. It's oh, the grand okay. juror. So um, Dick Sargent can't stand up and say, thank you for electing me every year, but I don't do anything in this position. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's more than one of those positions. Yeah, yeah they um, most all disappeared last year with a legislative change um, right. and or they now just became appointed. Kind of a name only. Kind of like the old blue laws, some of them. So, uh, is Article 5, that is, that's the total budget, correct? Correct. If you look at your overview, you can. Yeah, so that's what I'm looking at to make sure numbers match up. <laughs> yeah. This, this is, this is what we don't raise in taxes, and this is what we have to raise. Got it. Great. Got it? Well, yep. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Any questions on this? Do I hear a motion regarding it? Make a motion to approve the 
uh, town meeting warning as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Sarah, you probably have already discussed this, but, and I, I know you have. On Article 2 with um, the town offices, people have to write people's names in there, correct? They've always been able to, yeah. Well, yes and no. So um, people have to submit a petition to run and their name would be on the ballot, like uh, traditionally the select board does. They have until 5 p.m. On, on January 25th to submit a consent of candidate form. Uh, so anybody that submits that form by the deadline, their name would be printed on the ballot but there will always be a space for a write-in candidate. So right. you can always write somebody in if you want. And then the legislature did waive the petition requirement for candidates this year. <clears throat> so if you're running for a position, uh, you don't need to um, Get 30 submit. Signature. Yep, and I have a link on the homepage of the town website with a explanation and a link to the Secretary of State's website to download the form. That's good. Thanks, Sarah. What's the name of that form again, Sarah? Consent of Candidate. Oh, thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye by roll call. Gary? Aye. Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Eric? Aye. And I'm aye. Motion is passed. Next. Review and approve updated TA job description. Yeah, there was just a few changes I think that we discussed at the last meeting. Um, it is being advertised right now, so it's up there. Okay. Any questions about it from the board? Make a motion to approve the updated town administrator job description as presented. I have okay. a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <laughs> All in favor say aye by roll call. Gary? Aye. Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Eric? Aye. And I'm aye. Motion is passed. Approve the warrant. Do I, have a, do I hear a motion? Make a motion to approve the warrant. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Judy? Aye. Aye. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Gary? Aye. Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Eric? Aye. And I'm aye. Yeah, motion is passed. Yeah, we did. Okay. TA report, Dan. Um, Todd, and Todd's still on the line, so I'll ask him to, to chime in too. Um, uh, Giving everybody a paper copy of the, the town plan review. Uh, yeah. You know, I, you know, I mean, Todd can chime in here too as well. You know, I, I think it's, this is a very, very important document. It's a 10 year document, you know, unlike what it used to be a five year document. Yeah. It's also a regulatory document. Um, so it's just like, you know, active 50 commissions will look at this, uh, people will look at this and they're, you know, I think from my perspective, you know, if there's things that you want to do or don't want to do, then take a look at those things that are in it. Um, you know, there's a bunch of implementation things in the, in the past. I've already talked to Todd about a couple of them. You know, um, just one, you know, what our priorities are for, for purchasing equipment. Um, you know, I, I think it, it behooves the town or the select board really. This is your document, this is what you want to happen in the town over the next 10 years. So, it's a very, very important document. In fact, is to me, this is the baseline for the town and what actions the select board is going to look to take over the next 10 year period. And, and you should treat it as that because this, this is really what sets the base and sets your goals for what you want to do for that next 10 years. And so please treat it that, and, and when you read it, read it as that. This, this is the select board's direction for the next 10 years. Um, 
Todd, you want to chime in on any of that? Todd, Todd told me earlier, a really, really great read. It's only 60 pages. It shouldn't take me only just a few minutes to read it. Yeah. Is that Thanks. What you said? Thanks, Gary. At least now we know there are two people in town that read it, me and you. <laughs> Three. Three. Yeah, it's, a, it's the first major rewrite we've done. There are some stuff in there that's carried over from the last town plan, which is really written in 2012, 2013. The 2015 amendment was just the Herchak Green Mountain Arena proposal. Um, so uh, more important is the timing. We can put anything we want in the plan. That doesn't really matter to me. Um, you guys want to get this done. I want to get it done. Um, it requires a 30-day warning at both the planning level and select board level. So I just warned this last week. The earliest I could warn this for last week was February 23rd. So it takes a while to get a hearing, and then you vote to approve it at the next meeting. The, so a select board meeting at this point is already out into March, if not April. So what I'm trying to avoid uh, I'd love to get all the comments in by the February 23rd meeting. If you guys want to make changes, great, we'll make changes. Uh, what I'm trying to avoid is doing the February 23rd, letting planning vote it in March to you guys. You'll have a hearing in April, and then we get to your vote in May, and you want to change X, Y, and Z. And then we're starting at the 30-day warning of planning again, and we're looking at this thing in the fall. So I'd love to be proactive and try to get all the changes. I don't really care what they are, to tell you the truth on the whole. Uh, I just want to get everything kind of done in one batch and not have to make last-minute changes if possible. Well, I'll do my own um, Yeah, it's not a bad read, Bob. I think you'll, I think you'll like it. I, I would disagree with, with Todd just a little bit. You know, I think it's more important to get this document right, and I think it deserves uh, the time that it takes to get it right. And if you have to go back and do hearings again, uh, okay. a 10-year document, I strongly recommend that. Yeah. We'll see. We'll have a look. I think Todd's point is don't put this on the shelf and then pick it up in April and start looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Right, Thank you, Eric. Exactly. Thank you. I read the last couple. This one shouldn't be too bad. It's not that thick. I'm not. Uh, I'm not one for big, long documents. Lots of regulations. So it's definitely streamlined from where it used to be. It used to be 160 pages or something like that. Like the zoning bylaw. They're both about 50 to 60 pages now. Yeah. We're getting there. Yeah. Making progress. What else you got, Dan? All right. Um, DAC 250, I think we talked a little bit about that. Of course, I sent everybody the response that we got to DAC 250. Um, I've been in contact with Eric as the highway liaison. Um, and of course, um, Tyler, you know, who's our engineer and our consultant on the project, he's going through it. You know, um, I think there's some things in there that can be easily answered. Some things I think that are in there that are going to take a little bit more difficult to answer. Um, he did request the extension. Um, so now we have until March 5th um, to go out and get our responses put together. Um, so we're working on a response. Um, it, it, it's a lengthy reply that we got from the Act 250 Commission. It's the first one that we've got in writing um, since we started the process. Um, but I, you know, I, I think um, I have every confidence in Tyler um, that he'll put together a good response for us, and we'll get, get it back to the commission and continue to move forward in the process. I think that's all I can really offer right now. It has been a very long process. I think it was still a good application. I, don't, I think we put together everything that we need to be in there. And I think they have some questions, as they always do. And I think we're going to answer those questions, hopefully. Um, and I'll, I'll continue to consult with Eric and Gary for his expertise on those things. He's been through it more times than he probably likes to admit. <laughs> we're going to continue to, to move forward and, and get good responses put into the activity measure on that, uh, that permit. Um, Did I hear you? You, knew you can't retire until we get the permit approved. I always promised you I would come back and help with that. <laughs> I didn't say that because Eric mentioned that to me, and I'm not going to mention what I said. <laughs> I don't think that's fair, but I think it involves a fair to plot on the <laughs> land up there, and I don't think that's what we're looking for. And I can certainly don't have any, any plans to go soon like that. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, you know, I, I don't think it'd be realistic to ask somebody. That's stepping into my shoes to step into the middle of this one, and I'll always be available to, to come back and, and help the town on this. I, I, you know, there's something you just step in the middle of, and there's so many little details and nuances and, and permit that you can't do it like that. So I'm always going to be available to help the board and, and whoever places me on this particular application. 
uh, just because I spent so much time on it, there's no way anybody could ever catch up and get back up to speed on it. We're going to have to sign something too before you leave. That's fine. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. Um, earlier, Tina talked about FEMA. We did finally get our first. Uh, I know we did we or somebody mentioned it. Our first grant agreement back from FEMA for the October storms of last year. From the state. From the state. So it's been probably about one third of the process of yeah. the roads that we submitted. This, um, this particular group of roads has been obligated by FEMA, which means they send the information to the state, and the state needs to write up a grant agreement probably for at least three to four months. And the grant agreement was written up. Dan signed everything today, and it's been sent back to the state. They've acknowledged that they receive it. They're sending it on. I don't know. This particular one, I think, is only fifty-eight thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. But then you've got another whole group of roads that's still in mitigation with FEMA, and that's a bigger chunk. And I don't know. And then Mud City Loop Culvert. That's another. Right. You right. Know. And, and we're going to talk about that one in particular, just so. But and, and it's not like Tina and I haven't done this. Before. I mean, the first time we did this, actually, we've done it twice before. Within five, six months, we had the money. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and from what I know, nothing has changed within the Stafford Act that says how we're supposed to do this. Um, you know, Tina's, Tina's stuff that she did during the, the first storm was used <coughs> by the Motley's and cities and towns to send out to the other towns you know, during Irene so that they could help them set up the files and the system to do it. So, I mean, it's not like we haven't done this before, but I think one of the things, and Tina, please correct me if I have any of this wrong, and this one in particular, it, it help you understand our level of frustration with FEMA. So when we go to these initial briefings, and particularly they tell you, if you're going to work in a stream, you're required to get state and federal permits, and you have to follow the state and federal guidelines. I think anybody that does this type of work knows that, and, and you're required to do that for FEMA. So we've been working on the Mud City Loop, getting it through, you know, the, the big culvert. So now, and of course, we had our engineer write up all the stuff and codes and standards and permits, and they have all that. Um, so now we have to go back and prove to them that we have to follow state and federal guidelines to get it through mitigation. And, and the question you know, to them is the way they posed to me is, well, who would you have done this the same way if it would not have been a FEMA event? Well, of course. We have to do it this way because we have to follow state and federal guidelines. And, and I think we've answered that question now maybe four times. Yeah. You know, the same question over and over. And it, it is very frustrating for us. And, and I think we're lucky because there's staff here that, that does it and, and understands the process. I feel sorry for towns that don't have the benefit or the experience that somebody like Tina has to be able to do that, where they're probably just going to toss up their hands and not even be able to just after the third time they're going to go we've already told you that i mean you know, we you know we, we have to repeat each time we've already sent you this we've already sent you this mm -hmm. and i think it just helps the board and maybe the people out there listening understand yeah see is out there and they, they promise you a lot of things but it is a horrible process to get through um to really get it done and once again it's not like we haven't done this before um, and the process, Stafford Act hasn't changed. It, it, the laws haven't changed any, but it, it seems like the bureaucratic process for what we have to go through to get this funding is getting more outrageous. Uh, in, to do. in 2011, when they had that big flood in 2011, and we went through all of that, I think we received our money within five months. We haven't got a dime, and it's been well over a year. It's been long. And uh, I want to mention too that both Kevin and Paula have put a ton of time into this, so it hasn't just been me or Dan or even Tyler. It, it's been a law, and I thought many times Kevin was going to quit, but he did it. Thank God. Yeah. Didn't the FEMA officials request a copy of their own requirements? Yeah. From your... yeah. 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 I mean, so now literally we have to go back, and I'm going to have Tyler write a letter because that's the best way to do it. But once again, it's more expensive than now. But I actually have to have him write a letter to me that explains to them that if we're going to build this structure, we have to build it to state and federal guidelines. It makes no difference what guidelines we have. Mm -hmm. We have to have a permit from the state and from, and we have to send them those guidelines. We have right. to send them a link, or we have to send them a paper copy of the guidelines. Um, 
And once again, I go back to the very first briefing that we sent into. If you're going to work in a stream, you have to have all your permits. Okay, well, and you should have a permit, you have to follow the guidelines. And we sent them our permits. They have our corps engineer permit, they have our state permit. And I think it's just an example of you know, what we do around the region, unfortunately, with FEMA lately on a daily basis. So uh, that's kind of my quick little update on things going on around. Okay. Any questions for Dan? Thanks, Dan. Next, select board concerns. Gary. Well, it probably would have been appropriate that you just asked, but I was just wondering uh, when are we planning on advertising for Dan's position? It's happening right now. It's already out there now. It is out yeah. there now. I know Sarah and Tina are working on ND ad, right? Yeah, yeah it's already out on ND. Yeah, that's great. But I know Cambridge is looking at the same position yeah. as well. Yeah. I see they're out there in the front porch for them. And yeah. I'm looking for a book. Ours is on the Monday's and Sweden Town, which is Cambridge, and ours is on Indeed. And we, we have been receiving applications, um, as well, of course, the, the uh, administrator assistant. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Judy. Could someone refresh my memory about the 20% slope that we struck out of the Planning Commission's um, Zoning Board's guidelines? Will we get to revisit that? Not tonight. <laughs> no, no, not yeah, it tonight. Was, no. It was, uh, Todd, do you want to talk about that? Uh, sure. I wasn't prepared to. Um, the zoning was approved as uh, you guys voted it. Sands the 20% uh, steep slope regulations. The village trustees followed suit the following Wednesday night. They approved it without the slope regulations, too. Uh, actually, I, the village trustees, I think, actually had more concerns than you guys did, even though the slopes are more in the town than the village. So um, I'm not sure what will happen with the slope regulations. This is really a Conservation Commission proposal. Uh, it was kind of compromise language. The Conservation Commission wanted 10-acre lots up on Elmore Mountain, and the slopes that Planning Council wanted to treat all the town the same. That's where the steep slope regulation came from. Um, I think it's probably dead for now. We'll see what Ron wants to do. Um, I do share concerns with sending single-family home applicants to the DRB just because they're putting part of their barn or slope or, or whatever it might be on a, on a steep slope. So. Um, I, I think you guys made a fine decision, and we can always rework it and try to craft something different if you'd like. Okay, thank you. No, so I think you all, I shouldn't say you guys. Sorry again, Judy. I keep doing that. You all made a good decision. Thanks, Todd. How about you, Brian? Concern? <clears throat> the only concern I have is that I don't have that big book I could be reading, being I'm stuck in my room. Here we can get you <laughs> one. It's not that big, though. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Eric, so uh, on my soapbox for just a minute, please humor me. So throughout the year, things come up in front of the board and we all scratch our head and wonder what the answer is. And we turn to our different department heads for that answer and we seemingly always get one. It's an amazing thing. Tonight I've listened to department heads from every area of our town government talk about the complexities of Vermont law, federal law, the intertwined uh, uh, percentages within budgets and calling out monies to, to help defray expenses, this, that, and the other thing. I, I guess tonight it all just came to a head to me when I heard all of the different staff members in town talking about their areas of expertise and how fortunate we are and the true value of our community is the people in it. And the true value of our town government are the people that work here. And how blessed we are to have that level of expertise. Sarah keeps us out of hot water because she goes to training after training. She's learned her job. She's got to be one of the best in the business. Tina knows numbers inside and out. I, I just I can't say enough. Dan has, has done the same thing legislatively, kept us out of hot water. And a host of others. Staff members I haven't mentioned, but I just, I just got to tell you that uh, we really are fortunate here in Morristown in our community for the staff that we have here uh, that continues to work hard for us every day. I agree. That's a good comment. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Is there any other business? Take a motion to adjourn. I'll move. 
Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Brian. Aye. Aye. Aye, Judy. Motion is passed. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Au revoir. Over now. Bye.